Greetings. Welcome to Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Part 18, Basic Case Win. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. We're starting off this video in SSMS because I want to give you a grounding in the data that we'll be using throughout the rest of this video. So today's video will be using Fact Reseller Sales. This is the table in the database that tracks the sales that are made by businesses that buy from AdventureWorks and then sell retail to customers, like a bike shop, for example. So if we go into the database over here, we can take a look at the table so we can understand why the query is structured the way it is. So here is fact reseller sales. And real quick, I can open it up and you can see there's a bunch of columns, but as often as the case, we'll just select the top 1000 rows by right clicking on the table. And what we can see here is this, okay? We can see that we have a sales order number here. And the first thing we look at is, whoa, there's a lot of the same sales order number. And this, as we've talked about in a previous video, is a common design pattern that you see in databases and order tables in particular, which is the order table will actually have a record for every order line item in the order so that you'll see, for example, the identifier. So this is the sales order number, SO43659. And notice it's repeated. And the reason for that is pretty simple because there are multiple line items. And in fact, there are actually 12 of them in this particular order. So what we need to do is if we want to work with just the sales order all up and not the individual line items, we need to group them together. And so enter this query. So this query was used to produce the data that we'll see in Excel here in the next section, as well as will form the basis of all the queries going forward in this video. And if I just highlight it and run it, what we do, it, what we get back is instead of 12 rows for SO43659, we get it aggregated up. And so those 12 line items in total amounted to over $20,000 in revenue for AdventureWorks. Okay, now that we have a base understanding of what data we'll be using for this video, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to Excel and we can begin our coverage of the mighty case win. Here I am in Excel in the workbook corresponding to part 18 of the series. And what you can see here is the data from the query that we just covered in SSMS. So we have SO43659, we have a, sales, a total sales amount of more than $20,000. Okay, great. So here's the thing. We like to imbue our data with intelligence. In particular, Different types of businesses have different types of business processes. They have different types of logic. They have different types of business models. And they often want to imbue their data with those quote unquote business smarts. So one of the ways that we do this in Excel, for example, is we add custom columns to a table that embody logic, business logic. So for example, and to be sure, this is a totally contrived example. I'm going to add a column called order size to the table here. It's blank, there's nothing in it. So we now need to fill in some business logic. And let's say, for example, that the sales manager for AdventureWorks' reseller sales team decides that he would like or she would like to imbue different types of business processes, whether a order is quote unquote large or it's quote unquote small. Let's say maybe large orders get a thank you card or a bottle of champagne. I don't know, something like that. Like I said, this is a contrived example, so bear with me. But this happens all the time in the real world, as I'm sure you all know. So what we can do is we can actually use, what we can do is use Excel's mighty if function to implement this sort of logic. So that's pretty easy. I can just type in equals if. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, look, if the sales amount, which is in column B, and I'll just use B2 here to start with, if this is greater than, if this amount is greater than 8,400, then label this a large order. I took a look at the data real quick and just kind of eyeballed it. And 8,400 was a, just an interesting cutoff. But generally speaking, just think of this 8,400 number as just being arbitrary. So it's not really important. The core idea 
that I'm trying to get across, which is more important, is this idea that you can use conditional logic as embodied by Excel's if function to put smarts into your data. And of course, if it's not, then it's small. So this is what's known as an, an if statement in programming. If B2 is greater than, greater than 8,400, then make the value large, else make it small. So we're imbuing some logic, we're imbuing some intelligence into the data. And of course, if I hit enter, Excel automatically applies that function, that formula, all the way down the table, and you can see that this is a large order, a small order, so on and so forth. So this is something that you do a lot. I cannot believe how many times I've seen things like this in Excel workbooks in my long career. Now, once again, given the nature of this tutorial series, it's not surprising that if you're putting conditional logic like this in your Excel workbooks and your Excel tables, you're probably likely to do the same thing when you work with SQL. And that's where the mighty case win comes into play. Here we are back in SSMS. And the first thing I want to show you is a snippet. Now, this is not legit SQL. This will not run. But what I've done here is I've taken that first query that we saw at the very beginning of the video, and I've just wrapped it up as a CTE called sales orders. And in every query that we'll see through the rest of the video, we're going to be using this CTE to essentially aggregate all of the sales order information the way we need. So here is our first query. Now, as we saw in the previous section, you add conditional logic often in your work with Excel especially in tables, working with data, that sort of thing. You do exactly the same thing in SQL. Instead of using the if function like you do in Excel, what you use is a structure, a syntax called case when. And it essentially works basically the same. And what we can see here is a query that in fact implements the logic that we saw in Excel. So I'm just gonna break this down. I'm not gonna worry about the CTEs. We know CTEs, we love them, they're awesome. So this query logically processes as such. First up, grab everything from sales orders, SO. And as we know, a CTE creates a virtual table. So SQL says, cool, Dave, I'm gonna grab all of the records from the sales order virtual table, and you want to alias it SO, that's awesome, great. Next up, it checks to see if I have a where clause, which I do not, so it says, cool, he doesn't want to filter anything. It checks to see if I have a group by. Nope, he doesn't have a group by. Cool. What does he want to do next? He just wants to select some data. No problem. So I select the sales order number and I select the sales order amount. Amount, excuse me. And then SQL says, oh, hey, oh, hey now. Dave's got a case statement in here. He wants to inject some smarts. He wants to inject some conditional logic into his select list. No problem. I need to parse this out and figure out what kind of logic he wants me to execute on his behalf. This is SQL, right? Very helpful. SQL loves you too. Just like Excel loves you, SQL loves you too. Trust me. So here we go. First up, I say when, and this is when SQL says, okay, this is a condition, right? This is a condition. This is a logical condition he wants me to check out. And I said, hey, SQL, when the sales amount is greater than 8,400, then I want you to use a value of large. This is a string value, a character value in, in SQL because you can see here it's wrapped in single quotes and it's highlighted in red in SSMS. So we can say, great, if sales order amount is greater than 8,400, then we return back a string value of large. Else, notice this is explicit here, else return back small. And notice how this correlates exactly maps conceptually exactly to what we saw in the if statement in Excel in the previous section, right? Literally, this is like if in Excel, this is the condition right afterwards, and then comma, we had a double quote large, and then comma, double quote small. But conceptually, it's exactly the same, even though there's some more typing. And I, I apologize for that, but there's good reason for that, and you'll get used to it, trust me. <laughs> okay, so SQL says, great. I'm gonna return back large or small, depending on whether or not this logical condition is tripped, if it's true. And then we end off, this is how we start our case statement, our smarts, and this is how we end it. And then of course, as we know, generally speaking, if we don't provide an alias for this data, 
SQL won't know what to call the resulting column, so we give it an alias and we call it order size. And then just to be explicit, I order this by sales order number because as we know, we should not assume any particular ordering with our SQL queries. So it's always good to specify an order if we want that. All right, so if I highlight this bad boy and I run it, boom, we get back exactly the same data that we saw in Excel. So case win is mighty. Case win is when is awesome. As we'll see in subsequent videos in this series, when you're doing analytics, when you're using SQL to pull data, massage it, and perform analytics on, on the data, either directly in the database or after you pull the data out of the database, you use case win all the time, all the time. It's how you create new and interesting columns of data from millions of rows in your database. Maybe you load them in Excel or you load them in R or you load them in Python. I don't know, whatever tool you're using, and you execute some analytical goodness on it, you use case win all the time. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip back over to Excel and take a look at a more complicated example, a quote unquote smarter example, when we're going to say, look, what if I need to have a whole bunch of logical conditions, all kinds of smarts embedded into my data all at the same time? Okay, back in Excel. And what we can see here is I'm on another worksheet here in the workbook. This is just the same data as we saw before. What if the if function in Excel is not enough? What if it's not enough smarts? Because essentially you only have two results. You check something and you say, if this thing is true, then large or else small. That's what we saw in the previous Excel section. So you can use the ifs function in Excel to incorporate many, many logical conditions all at the same time. So let's try that out. So again, let's go ahead and add a order size column to our table. And I'm just going to double click it to make it a little bit bigger. And we can say, cool, I would like to use the ifs function, ifs function. And you can see here, checks whether one or more conditions are met and returns a value corresponding to the first true condition. Cool. So we'll go ahead and say, awesome sauce. If B2, which is the sales order amount, is less than $1,545, we're going to go ahead and return back small. Okay, great. And then we can say, well, I'm not quite done yet. If B2 is less than $8,400, then return back medium. And if B2 is less than $34,234, return back large. Oops, large. And then lastly, if B2 is greater than or equal to $34,234, return back extra large. Oops, extra large. All right, cool, that was a lot of typing. But notice that this is a even more realistic example. I've worked in many, many companies where this kind of logic happens all the time. You know, you wanted to denote whether a customer is like bronze, silver, or gold, or an employee is this or that or whatever. So you have these kinds of arbitrary cutoffs, which are hopefully data-driven, by the way, so they're not necessarily that arbitrary. They're data-driven, and you get some sort of classification scheme. Now, notice here that Ifs, as we saw in the in the documentation that I read a little bit earlier, it chooses the first one. That's true. So if, let's say, B2 was $1,322, you're going to get back small. It's not even going to check the rest of this stuff because it's going to say, look, I found a condition that was true, and the first one that's true, I'm going to use and return back the appropriate value. And this is exactly, by the way, how case when works as well. Case when in SQL works like it goes through each one of the when statements, and the first one that it finds that works, it's the one that gets picked. So it works exactly like it does in Excel. So hit enter here, and you can see how we filled out all of this data lickety split. We've got smalls and larges and mediums and extra larges and all sorts of things. Once again, these numbers up here, I did pick based on data, but it doesn't really matter what logic I used for them. I just use some data, pick some points just to illustrate this idea of like, you can incorporate all kinds of smarts using something like ifs 
in your tables of Excel data. Okay, let's flip back over to SQL for the last section of this video. Back in SSMS, and what we have here is a query that mimics what we just saw in Excel using the ifs, the IFS function, which is a multi-conditional logic situation. So I'm not going to drain this because essentially the code is basically the same, except for the fact that we've added two additional whens here. So let's just talk about how this works. So what happens essentially is this. Every row that comes back from your query, right? Every row that comes back from the final virtual table, the virtual table that's created from all of the from and join tables that are filtered by where, that are grouped by, all those sorts of things. Everything that happens before hitting the select list produces a virtual table. And then what happens is every row of that resulting virtual table is fed through the case statement to see if any of the wins actually are tripped, or I just fall down to the else. So essentially every row goes through here. So this row goes through, this row goes through, this row goes through, this row goes through, so on and so forth. And essentially what happens is SQL says, hey, is the value of SO.sales amount for this particular row of data less than 1545? If it is, it gets a small. If it's not less than 1545, but it is less than 8400, then it gets this value. If it's greater than or equal to 8400, but less than 34,234, you get this value. And if it is 34,234 or larger, then you get this else value here of extra large. And this is really, really simple, right? I mean, I know I'm kind of belaboring the point, but I just want to be crystal regarding this. This is how you build multiple conditional case wins, just like this. You just add a bunch of wins. And generally speaking, more often than not, you're going to want an else just in case, because usually you want some sort of default to fall through. And if for no other reason, because of data quality issues, right? You might, you might say to yourself, look, we have no orders at this point in time that are more than or greater than or equal to $34,234. Sweet. Great, maybe that is absolutely true for whatever reason. However, it might not always be true in the future. So when you write your SQL, it helps to say, look, I'm going to make as, many, as, as few assumptions, as few assumptions about the data quality as possible, and I wanna throw some robustness in here. So that's where an else clause is a really good thing to have. Okay, so if I highlight this and run it, once again, you, we're going to get exactly the same output that we saw in Excel larges and smalls, and we got some mediums, and we got extra larges and all that jazz. Okay, now some of you might have been saying, hey Dave, I'm an Excel wizard, or I'm an Excel sorceress, and I've never used the ifs function before. And the ifs function is actually relatively new. So what folks have often done in the past in Excel to actually create multi-conditional situations is they just embed if functions inside of if functions in Excel. So you can embed many ifs if you'd like, and then that, what that allows you to do is create a multi-conditional situation because you have an if inside of an if inside of an if, and so on and so forth. Guess what? You can do that in Excel and it totally works and it's totally legit. And of course, not surprisingly based on this series, you can do this in SQL as well. And it's frequently done. You can embase, you can, excuse me, you can embed you can embed a case when inside of another case when. Let's go ahead and just see what that looks like real quick. Now, I need to warn you, this is an extremely contrived example. Extremely contrived. What you can see here is what I've done is I've taken the previous query and I've replaced the when that returned back the value of small. And what I've done is I've said, look, you know what, instead of the value of small, so notice the then here and there used to be like, quote unquote, small over here, it's gone now. And what I've done is I've replaced it with another case when. And what I've done here is something super silly. So in the case of small orders, I'm indicating whether the sales order number for small orders ends in a even number or ends in an odd number. So what we can see here is this. Instead of returning back small, as we saw here in the previous video, 
we enter another case win and SQL says, okay, cool. You know what? The sales order amount is less than 1545. I'm going to go ahead and process another case win. And this case win does something kind of cool. The first thing it does is says, hey, SQL, I want you to grab the sales order number, which happens to be a string, right? Because we can see down here it's an alphanumeric because it's got an S and an O in it in addition to some numbers. And we say, hey, just grab the rightmost character. So using the right function, which is a function in SQL, which essentially says, look, for a character value, for a string value, for a text value, go to the extreme right end of it. Go to the end of the string and just grab one character. That's what this code says. And that would correspond to the last digit in these sales order numbers. And then we say, okay, cool, do that. And then this essentially is what's known as the modulus operator. It does division with the remainder. And essentially says, look, grab that last digit, divide it by two, and if there's no remainder, if the remainder is zero, then you have yourself an even number. So for example, four modulus two, two goes into four two times, there is no leftover, there is no remainder, so that's zero, so that's an even number. Same with six, with eight, 10, 12, you get the idea. Otherwise, it's an odd number. Okay, grab the rightmost character out of a sales order number, which is a digit. You know, you got nine, zero, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And then divide it by two and check to see if there's any remainder. If there is a remainder, then it's an odd number. If there is no remainder, then it's an even number. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and run this real quick so we can take a look at it. You can see here that this is a small order because it's less than $1,545. Notice that it ends in zero. Zero is considered an even number. Notice that here's one for $419 and some change, and it ends in a three, which is an odd number, so on and so forth. Now, again, a contrived example, but it illustrates the point of just like in Excel, where you can embed an if inside of an if, you can embed a case when inside of a case when. And this is how you can make your queries super, super smart. And as I said earlier, and I'll repeat again, over the course of the series, we're going to see case when crop up a lot because you use it a lot when you're using SQL to conduct analytics. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you're enjoying the video series. I hope you're finding it useful. If you are, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will be producing more videos on SQL, which is a valuable skill for all professionals. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.